Now let's talk about something that's a bit more opinionated, which can be, which can be diverse to attack and defense, and it's called the chop. In tennis, it's the slice, and that's it. There's no other comparison I can use for it. But the chop is a, mostly a defensive move in this stage and age of table tennis, but there is players who still use it as a, an offensive move where they like to block the ball and chop it from the way from the table. It is a very fun way to play with it. It's very hard to actually you know, do the technique as a style, but nonetheless, you still need to learn how to defend the ball, because in table tennis, it's not all about attacking. So now in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do the backhand version and the forehand version. So, let's get started. Now, the forehand and the backhand chop, the defensive move. First things first, let's get into our position. So, I am right-hand player, I'm gonna be on this side. If I was a left-hand player, I would be on this side, okay? Now, as a right-hand player, left foot is forward, right is back. Now, just because your left foot is forward does not make your right leg the less dominant. It is still the dominant one. The leg or the side of the body that you play with, so for me, it's the right arm, which is the right leg, the dominant leg, is the most important part of your table tennis. If you're on the left side, it's, it's the mirror image. Your left arm is dominant with your left foot. But as a right hand player, my right arm and right leg is the dominant leg. And this is your positioning. Now, as you establish your distance and your position off the table, let's talk about the most important thing about the, the chop itself, is how to read it. And you need to pick it up like the drive for the back and for the fore in its channel. So if I'm standing right here, where is my backhand? I feel like Dora the Explorer when I'm waiting for the answer. It's from the middle of the stomach. That is where I expect the ball to arrive. No matter where it's gonna be, I have to be right in front of it with the backhand shot, okay? So even if the ball comes short, is where the chop affects, it's still gonna be right dead center of the stomach. The foreign chop channel and the foreign drive is exactly the same thing. This is my foreign channel, which means if the ball comes in short, I'm in the same exact position. All that is different is the actual technique. But, you, but that's the first thing you need to learn, is how to read the channel that you are in. Because without this, you will never be able to actually time your connectivity with the rubber and the ball, unless you find the correct channels coming from. So for me, we're gonna learn to do backhands in here, and a forehand chop in here. Three steps, three steps to learn. One is your feet, Second is your ready arm positioning, and third is to follow through with the technique. And don't think that, oh, once I learn to do a backhand, it'll be easier to do a forehand. No, it's, it's not really. It's a bit better, yes, but it's not gonna be like, oh yeah, if I can do it with my left hand, I can do it with my right hand. No, it's not, okay, it's definitely not. So trying to learn these things at the same time as you're doing it. Yes, one thing is obviously gonna be easier than the other, but keep pushing, keep striving for that perfection for these shots, and this is how we start. Wherever the ball is, whatever the channel of the ball, your right foot, your dominant foot, should aim for that channel. So if I'm aiming to do a backhand chop, right from here, my right foot is gonna go under the table towards to the ball. And this is where my, this is how my foot. Don't, now don't watch my upper body, watch my feet. This is right here. This is my chop, okay? If the, if the ball comes to the forehand, becomes a forehand chop, it goes to the forehand channel, and I'm actually pointing it, okay? You can see that I'm, I'm pointing where my leg goes. Right there. Your background channel or your forehand channel. That doesn't change. And that should be the first thing you do in anything. Fix your footwork, watch the ball with your eyes, do the correct footwork. As soon as you planted your foot, no matter where it is, back or fore, your arm, your right arm, needs to become in a 90 degree angle in its respective channel. So if I'm doing the backhand channel, my right foot goes under the table, and my right hand, my playing hand, will go from ready position to this, right there. Why? I need to place the racket in its channel of the ball. It's the same thing for the forehand. I'm in ready position, I see the ball is landing, I'm landing my feet on the channel, and my arm changed like that. It looks like a drive, because it is. It should be as easy as that. Where the ball is coming from, traveling in the channel, 
is how you place your arm. Because even if this is long and you misread it, you can still take a forehand drive and you can still take a backhand drive if your foot is correct, okay? That's how it should be done. This is why I get really annoyed with coaches where they mislead you. No, this is how it's done. It is as easy as it sounds. It's where the ball is, is where you need to plant your foot and you need to plant your racket in the starting channel. So again, real quick, plant your foot. As you're planting your foot, just about as you place it down, your arm should be in the right position. Don't try and do synchronize at the same time. It's, you're gonna lose balance, you're gonna lose control, and it's gonna just be messy. You gotta be steady to it. Nice and steady, okay? Watch now how steady this is gonna be. That's it. Don't have to shake the table, don't have to be aggressive to it. You just have to put your foot a little bit quicker before you put your arm. Now, let's talk about the angle of the backhand and the forehand chop. Let's say we're talking about the forehand first. Let's identify the channel. Start from here to there, right there. Your angle is like this. Make sure knuckles go down and the, and the angle you're doing it is slightly for, forward. So it's not flat down, but slightly forward. Just borderline, not seeing your backhand um, rubber. So the black side for me. So right in this position, I don't see my black, uh, my black side of the rubber. And my forehand, looks like this in an L shape, completely flat. If I tilt it up, it loses consistency. You need to hold it the same way you would hold the position of a forehand drive. And in this case, it's like this. You wind up and you go forward with the straight arm. That's all it is. Don't, if you keep your angle completely straight, like a forehand drive, the most likely the ball will go into the net. If you keep it too open, most likely you'll miss connection of the ball and the racket. You need to tilt it a little bit, like that. The backhand is very similar. You identify your channel, you put your arm like this. See, automatically, in this way, the knuckles go to the ceiling up. And then again, the angle's tilted down. It's borderline that I don't see my red rubber. And I wind up and I release it. Wind up and I release it. And there's your angles. Quick summary. Knuckles down, angle leaning towards the table, release and go. Wind up and release. Backhand. Same thing, knuckles go up, same angle, down forwards, and just release and go forward. There's your backhand. Try to not put your angle very open like that. Keep it nice and like sunk into the table. So we really focus on rolling the ball. If you put it too sideways, it's gonna hit the tape and it's gonna go to the net. Pull in the arm and I let go and slice it under. You need to move your arm forward but keeping it still straight. You don't want to hit the ball and go like sideways just because you're opening up your arm. It does not mean you have to go sideways. You need to balance your shot and going forward, okay? Same for the forehand. Go forward. The hardest thing is when you're playing a real ball, you need to time the height to be above the table and make sure you're slicing it so it rolls over. Without it, you will hit the net just like that. Even for the forehand. You go in, trying to roll the ball forwards. And don't go too sideways, otherwise you will miss. Let's turn on the robot, let's give it a go. I bend my knees, I'm nice and low. Channel is backhand. Right foot under, arm in and out. Right foot under, in and out. Let me slow it down even more. Let me keep the right leg, my dominant leg, under the table so I can speak a bit more. Now it's under. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the trigger and I'm letting it go. I'm winding up and pulling forward. Winding up and pulling it forward. I'm trying to practice those little basics again. We're just coming and hitting it. Experience, bad or good, in this case, is very important. Hopefully you'll do it with great technique. But no matter how, ball, how tall the ball is, whatever the chop spin or speed is, try and hit the ball with a chopping effect to it and that will gain you experience learning how to hit it and how not to hit it. And that's it to our forehand and backhand chopping video. Remember the three things, the dominant foot under the table, the correct angle and just release it. From in to out, from both ways, in to out. Play as much as you can, any experiences, good experiences, as long as you put the correct, efficient footwork training with the arm and you'll, you'll see results straight away. 
Just play, have fun, enjoy the game.